Mr. Seliger, uh, the, the, you have a different challenge. M Mr. Solomons needs to see if, with 101 members, if he can get close to that number or wherever he gets a uh, safe Republican seat. You do not currently have two-thirds in the Senate Correct. among Republicans. Is that a goal for you in this process, to get to two-thirds? Is it possible to draw a map that gets you to two-thirds this next time? It's a consideration. It's a, it's a scenario that you have to consider because Republicans are the majority and they have certain expectations. Right. That, that's where it maybe is about politics and is not about uh, uh, fried chicken uh, yeah, calories, calories, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you acknowledge that if you, if, you do, if you go into this process intending to get to two-thirds, there's no explanation for that but pure politics. Right. Right. Oh, so can you do it? Can you get to a full two-thirds? That's going to be challenging, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's no, you, you don't have any, you want to offer me any specifics well, as to why that's challenging? Yeah, it's challenging because there are, are three white Democrats who, who don't have what are called protected districts under the Voting Rights Act. Although in, in, in a hearing a couple of months ago, Senator Watson of, of Travis County asserted that, that his is right. a protected district. Right. In, fa in fact, I have the language right uh -huh. here. Senator Watson wrote to his constituents specifically. The minority population in Senate District 14 is growing and is significantly larger and a more effective voting bloc than ever, even stronger than when the current District 14 was drawn in 2001. Minorities now comprise a majority of the residents in Senate District 14. This means that any effort by partisan forces to break apart Senate District 14 in such a way that minority voting strength is reduced would most certainly violate the Voting Rights Act. Is he correct or incorrect? Uh, I don't know. I, I make you no see, legal. this is the line of argument. A absolutely. And so what we'll do is we'll draw the lines and, and submit them to uh, uh, a, a legal team of which I'm very proud, consisting mostly of, of faculty members at Baylor Law School who do as much or more of this than probably anybody of course, in the Mr. country. Mr. Watson is a graduate of Baylor Law School, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I will observe. I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. Incest that. is relative. <laughs> and. Um, that's the kind of joke I'd expect from Eisler, actually, not from you. We miss him. Not He's sure that's a compliment. Um, it's not. Uh, so, you know, but it's not just Watson, but, you know, you mentioned there were three white Democrats. Well, Wendy Davis is also saying correct. that her district would put her, put, put her in the same, quote, protected, not maybe in a legal sense protected, but in a, quote, protected status as, as Watson. She thinks that she can make that argument for herself, too. And, and she's, she's free to try and will weigh that right. argument legally. Right. But keep in mind that when she won that district, I think the Republican Orvis mm -hmm. of it, if, if memory serves me, was in the 52-53 range. Well, and, and was held previous to her winning. By Mr. Brimer, by a Republican. By an Anglo Republican. Right. And so I think that argument will prove to be somewhat weaker. I ultimately won't make that judgment from a legal sense. Now, I, I held Mr. Solomon's to the fire on uh, Sheets, Anderson, and Burkett, and Land Troop. I'm going to ask you is Wendy Davis toast? That, that is the perception out here in the world that if any member in the Senate is, is, is essentially in need of another thing to do after this session, it may, it may be Mrs. Davis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far to say she's toast, but given the composition of her district today, she will be challenged because it's still, at least marginally, a Republican right, district. Right, but an electoral challenge is one thing, and a redistricting exercise that results in her being in an unwinnable or, or eliminated district in the most extreme case is another thing. Now, people are free to challenge her outside of decennial redistricting. Right. I'm asking whether she's toast, not because a Republican, Mr. Brimer, or somebody else might step forward, but because you all are going to monkey with the lions to the degree that she cannot win that district. Are you all going to do that? Um, we haven't done it yet. We're going to look at it and see just what it's going to do. It, it, there will be a lot of pressure from people in, in the Republican Party to try and do something there. Uh, how far it can be taken, I don't know yet. And how about Mr. Watson? Obviously, people in this room who live in Austin and Travis County may have a, a disproportionate interest in the, in the answer that you give. But is, is he, does he have a problem? And would you uh, put his problem on a, on a similar plane with Mrs. Davis's? Or is she and got more of a problem than he does? I would say probably she has more of a problem than he does. And he, he, let's say he's right. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the verdict is that it is a Voting Rights Act protected district. Well, then he has no problem at all, unless it's an opponent in Travis County. And that's not much of a problem for him. If, if you look at the Senate map, you know, the way these, all these maps, Mr. Solomon knows this and you do as well, that all the maps that have come out or projected maps that have come out, people whose uh, districts lost population are listed in red, people whose po uh, districts gained population are uh, listed in black. I looked at the Senate map again this morning, and if you look west of, of I-35, it is the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. 
The following senators, by my estimation, lost not just population, but significant population in the last 10 years. Rodriguez, Uresti, Seliger, mm -hmm. Duncan, Frazier, and if you want me to get a little bit closer to I-35, both Van Der Putin and Zaffarini. I mean, that's an enormous, not just population, but an enormous amount of population. What on earth do you do out west to make that right? Well, the gravity comes from the big cities, from the Metroplex, San Antonio, and Travis County. And so all of those districts, in a way, are drawn that way. Their eastern margins are drawn that way. The 31st Senatorial District currently has 26 counties. It's going to be somewhere, I think, between 37 and 40 counties. And, and going west is not the answer because Loving County, for instance, has 84 people in it. Right. Well, by the time you fill in, if you go in from the corners, and, and that means Senator Rodriguez in El Paso and me in the panhandle, that's pushing everybody toward those urban areas. And, and that's where you get the additional people for 31 districts.